Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week like every week we have an incredible variety for you guys and girls and I want to start off by saying as always down in the description there is a timestamp to skip to the specific watch you want to take a closer look at there's also a link over to the website where you can take a closer look at all the information the photos the price that's to excuse the noise, Clark and Well, as always, is super loud and super busy. Um, but yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed this week as well, because it was just gone as of the time you're watching this, Thursday and Friday, bank holiday weekend. I hope you've enjoyed it. I also want to start off by saying this coming week, so you're watching this Saturday, the week commencing Monday, I am likely not going to be in the office at all that week, so I do apologise in advance for any delays. However, Danny will still be in the office, he'll still be processing orders, we'll still be making sure stuff is shipped out. So if you order a watch, there will be no delays, hopefully. What it does mean, however, is appointments will be limited. We will not be doing the usual back-to-back -back appointments because Danny still has his job to get on with, which is photography. Uh, and I obviously need to try and get in at least one day to hopefully record the drop video, so fingers crossed. Um, but that is all of the rambling, I think. And thank you all, because every week is just getting better and better and better. And I really do appreciate it. But what's on wrist? Let's take a closer look. So I'm wearing a Citizen Bullhead from the 1970s. This is one from the personal collection. Um, I, I suspect this is never going to go for sale. I've thought about it a few times and ummed and odd, and then every time I pull it out. So um, I don't think this is ever going to come up for sale. But massively underrated, I think, you know, if you're looking for a mechanical, automatic, vintage chronograph, Citizen and Seiko are the brands you should be looking at in the affordable category that offer really interesting designs. And this bullhead is certainly an example of that. Um, but that's enough of all of that. We're going to start off with the watches on the table. We have from interesting Icopod all the way down to, you know, Smiths and vintage Amiga and vintage JLC and everything you can possibly imagine in between. This is a really varied drop. I think you guys and girls are going to really like it. But we've got to start off with the one that I think is my favorite on the table, and that is the Icopod or Ikipod, depending on how you say it. I'm going to say Icopod because I think that's how I usually refer to it. But let's take a closer look at this awesome watch. Okay, what a watch to start this week's episode with. This is the Ikepod uh, Megapod, so it's not just an Ikepod, it's a Megapod Chronograph MG01 in titanium. This watch is actually from December 1999 and it comes surprisingly with its full box and paperwork, but in addition to that, it also comes with a unworn black rubber strap. Now, for anyone who's been doing any research on Ikepod or knows of the brand, you'll know how incredibly hard to find straps are. Uh, it's just kind of like the Richard Mill world where they actually sell for quite a lot of money, as do these straps, especially the original ones. Now the strap design you can see is rather unusual, it actually screws at the side and it all pushes through with a bar. Uh, and the gentleman who actually invented this kind of design I believe sold the rights over to the Apple Watch which is why you'll notice some of the design similarities. So there's a lot of history in Icopod and a brand certainly worth researching. I personally think they were way ahead of their time and maybe too far ahead of their time to the point where it didn't work. Whereas if they had done it nowadays it would have flew off the shelves. And that's something to be said because Icopod is now back and I actually own one of the modern ones and they are fantastic and they're really sort of pushing the boundaries with what's to be done today so it's great to see. Now inside this is the automatic LPJ8301 which is basically a heavily modified Valju 7750. Uh, there's a partial display case back, this is something they were quite famous for. You also have everything over on the left side of the case as opposed to the right and the right side is your inner rotating bezel. So that's something to keep in mind, you have a 24 hours, you have a 12 hour totalizer, you're running seconds, a date over at 6 and a 30 minute totalizer as well, a really interesting watch. Um, but as I say, 1999, full box and papers, that's what makes this so incredibly rare and unusual uh, and not something you see often at all. And I think for the price, if you're into this kind of wacky independent stuff, this is something you have to experience at least once. But let's show it on wrists and tall dimensions. And here we go on my just shy of seven inch wrist. Now this is something I'm gonna send to people inquiring because I think this is important. You're gonna see the dimensions on the website and you're probably gonna think it's a huge watch and totally unwearable. And it couldn't be further from that. This is 46 mil by 45.5 mil look to look. So it's a tad bit shorter uh, in the look to look length. It is 17 mil thick, but the overall case profile makes it wear super interesting like this UFO on the wrist that's just meant to be there. 24 mil lugs, that's from that point, it does taper down slightly. And you know what, it is super, super wearable. You're seeing that on my wrist, I don't think that looks too big. I don't think it looks out of place. 
I personally really like it and I think you guys and girls will love it as well. So go check it out on the website today. From there, we're gonna go over to something you don't see often and that is a pre-owned Fears. We're gonna be taking a closer look at the Fears Brunswick Whites. This is the Gen 2 dial as well, so let's take a closer look. Next up, we have a Fears Brunswick White. Now, as you guys and girls know, we stock Fears. We stock Fears brand new and we are an authorized seller for Fears in the UK and in London. Um, however, many, not many Fears watches have ever come up for sale pre-owned in the modern era. So it's great to see them starting to appear. The reason being, people have often kept hold of the watches they bought brand new and they've just not really reappeared on the market. They absolutely love the watches and there's nothing wrong with that. However, they are starting to appear as Fears is selling many more watches. We're starting to deal with the pre-owned section. So you can sort of be guaranteed it's going through the hands of an authorized stockist of the brand still which is fantastic so we're very proud to be able to offer that so this is the fierce brunswick polar white mark 2 dial so this is actually the dial they produce for the least amount of time the mark 1 was slightly different this one has i believe more of a recessed uh, sub dial you also have brunswick stated under the dial and no england yet just there so the new uh, dials are very very clean compared to this one you be the decider of what you prefer but at the end of the day it's really cool to have something like this in um, inside beating away through the exhibition case back which is now closed is a manually wound uh, eta 7001 based on the old pesa movements very, very reliable and a great movement as well. You can see you've got the Fierce pipette there on the uh, on the movement, a sort of iconic piece of Fierce history. Obviously, you've got the cushion case. This is based on a vintage model that was made in sterling silver back in the day. So really sort of taken inspiration from their previous watches. And this one is from January 2021. It does come with its full box and paperwork and paired on a short Bristol strap. So do keep that in mind. The strap is short. It's not the regular length. But they show it on wrists and tour mentions and here we go on my just shy of seven inch wrist now with the short strap i have one whole spare to wear this strap so this strap would be i would consider this too small for me there's just not enough room so i would want a regular strap that just gives you an idea of strap sizing so this is 38 mil by 42 mil lug to lug only 11.8 mil thick and 20 mil lugs you guys and girls know my thoughts on the brunswick i think it's Proportionally, it is perfect. And design-wise, this is also beautiful. And you be the decider of which one you prefer, prefer, the white, the blue, or the brown. We actually have a blue that's just come into stock, a pre-owned blue. So if you are looking for the blue, let us know. Get in contact via email. But this one is available on the website today, so go check it out. Let's stick to modern for a moment. We're gonna be taking a look at the Chrono Tokyo, and this is an absolutely awesome piece. We've had one in the past. This is our second, so let's take a closer look. Next up is a, another Chrono Tokyo. Uh, you guys and girls know I've been a big fan of what this brand is doing. I think the dial work and the case work is incredible. This is the Grand Hagony, and I, I really believe I butcher that every single time. It's very difficult to capture. The way I describe this is it's almost like spilt oil on bread brass. Uh, it sort of gives that sort of uh, illusion that it's sort of dripping off the dial. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you guys can see what I mean. Um, but on the website, you'll see a detailed breakdown of how this is done and it's fascinating. I'm not going to say any more because I, I want to give you guys and girls a reason to go over to the website. So go check that out. But absolutely gorgeous design, especially with the numerals uh, done how they are and obviously the text on the dial. This is just so, so cool. So, so unusual and a real conversation starter, uh, especially for those who are not into watches. I feel like they'll see this on your wrist they'll see those numerals and if they catch that correctly with the light they're going to be drawn straight away to how incredible that is but this is from march 2022 so it's pretty much brand new it does come with his full box and paperwork it is pre-owned however it's been worn maybe twice to be honest so you, you're going to notice no real signs of wear inside is the automatic miota 9039 beating away uh, and yeah just overall a really great package but let's show it on wrist and taut dimensions there we go on wrist my apologies i said the wrong movement caliber is the miota caliber 90 s5 so the high grade movements but here we go here it is on my wrist at 36.5 mil by 43 mil lug to lug only 11.5 mil thick and 20 mil lugs so endless options right there however this pairing works really really well with that dial i actually think a nice sort of mesh bracelet could look kind of cool on this as well but you know you buy it and you put it on whatever you want so go check it out on the website today from there let's go over to a limited edition hanhart and this is the first one we've ever had in it's a big watch it's an interesting watch and let's take a closer look next up is hanhart now this watch is brand new and unworn i will take this wrapping off so we can actually have a closer look but what a beast of a watch 
this is the Hanhart Primus Desert Pilot Dark Limited Edition of only 100 pieces and it does come with his full box and paperwork as you'd expect from August 2021 and being away inside here beautifully decorated is the automatic Salita uh, SW510 which as a lot of you guys and girls will know it is their chronograph movement. Now what makes this watch so interesting and why we actually picked it up to stock is I absolutely love this hinge lug design. I'm actually not wearing a watch that I've been wearing for quite a while, but it's a 1940s chronograph with hinge lugs. So I found it quite fitting when this one came up. Obviously you have the iconic red uh, pusher for the reset for the chronograph. Um, yeah, just a really, really cool black DLC coated watch with that really nice desert sand colored dial. This watch won't be for everyone. However, what I would recommend is you research Hanhart's history. It goes back a while and it is fascinating. They are a brand that have been around and done a lot of things and actually had some records as well. So I'd highly recommend you go read our write up on the website and also research the brand because it may surprise you. But um, that's enough of all that. Let's show it on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on wrist. Is it a big watch? Absolutely. Can I get away with it? Just about, thanks to those hinge lugs. Um, so you be the decider if this is the kind of thing for you. So it is 44 mil by 54 mil lug to lug. And what I will say is that 54 mil is for the lugs extended and not hinged down. So keep that in mind. It's 16 mil thick and 24 mil lug. So it is a big looking watch. And this strap, in my opinion, works perfectly on the watch. I actually probably wouldn't be swapping it over. But go check this one out on the website today. From there, we're gonna go to something you're either gonna think is really cool or you're gonna be not interested at all and that is opinion but it's not any old opinion this is opinion worn by john cena in the film fast and furious 9 um, and before you say oh it's the same no it's the exact same one it's the one he is photographed wearing or filmed wearing in the film and it even has the strap which is ridiculously large let's take a closer look at this piece so as i say one you're either going to love or you're going to be not bothered by it at all and this is the one worn by john cena you can see this strap is ridiculous. It does not fit me even on the tightest option. And this was specially made for, I believe his nine inch wrist. I could have that wrong, but I believe he has a nine inch wrist, which is just ridiculous. Um, so this was specially made for him to be able to wear in the film. And that film was obviously Fast and Furious 9. Uh, and this was made for John Cena. So you can actually see the letter provided to us by uh, Pinion, which states this fact, but also a photo on the website of John Cena wearing this in the film, which is always pretty cool to see. Um, again, you be the decider of whether that makes this cool or not. Yes, it adds a small amount to the price, but really not a lot. I think like a couple of hundred pounds is what we've added, as opposed to just selling this watch as a regular one without that provenance. Um, but this is the Ferrer Axis 2 Bronze uh, from March 2020 with the full box and papers and inside is the automatic ETA 2824-2, uh, very good and reliable movement. And again, you know, you're getting yourself a really cool bronze watch with a really nice dark blue dial and just a cool funky story. This is the kind of thing where, you know, you're at a party and someone asks what's that on your wrist and you've got to think a little bit more than just saying it's an interesting independent brand here in the UK. You can add the story, show the photo and it's just one of those quirks. Again, some people will be absolutely not faced by it at all and some people will find it really, really cool. So let's show on wrists and tall dimensions. And here we go on my wrist. So this is a uh, 41.5 mil by 50 mil look to look right under that 50 or right on that 50 mil look to look I always go on about 12.5 mil thick and 22 mil look so if this strap doesn't fit you which I'll be surprised if it does uh, you can swap it out into any strap that obviously you'd like to wear it on so go check this one out on the website today from there we're going to go to vintage with probably one of the nicest examples of this reference I have yet seen and that is this gorgeous Jaeger Cultura. Uh, from the 1940s. Let's take a closer look. Next up, this gorgeous Jaeger Le Coutre, or Jeje Le Coutre, however you're supposed to pronounce it. Say it however you want. JLC, a lot easier. I'm just going to say JLC. So this is the JLC Vintage P478 manually wound from the 1940s. Absolutely gorgeous. Really nice dial, really nice hands, really nice loom indices. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece and it's paired on this very nicely fitting pigskin, uh, which really goes with the era for the strap because obviously it would have been pigskin uh, back when it was sold in the 1940s. And what an interesting time, 1940s, during the war this would have been made, likely if it was made before 1945. And the overall design is very reminiscent of the sort of military watches that would have been worn. 
And there are even military examples of this reference. So it's really interesting to see that this could just be a civilianized version of that. Obviously, we'll never really know, um, but interesting nonetheless. So inside here is a manually wound JLC caliber P478, a very beautiful and well-made movement, especially for the 1940s and something we would still look at today and look in awe of, that's for sure. Now on the dial, you will actually see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but right there, there is a stain on the dial. And that is actually from the hands. That is radium burn, which is really interesting. And what that means is these hands were in that same position for many, many years. So long, in fact, that the radium, so the radioactive material in the hands, actually burnt the dial. Um, now, some people look at that and go, well, we shouldn't be wearing something that's burnt the dial because that means that radium is going to be bad for us as well. Now, if you wear this watch every single day and you sort of wear it around your head, dial facing inwards, yeah, maybe there'd be a problem after 50 years. But to be honest, in, a, in sort of random wear with other watches and just on the wrist, you haven't got to worry about it because the sort of reading is so low. So I wouldn't stress too much. I know some of you guys and girls certainly do. And if you're worried, don't wear it, of course. But for those of you who are interested, I wouldn't be worried too much. And that comes from my experience, but also the experience of many watchmakers who have been doing this 30, 40 years, and I would trust them over some forum posts personally. So let's show us on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Now, I just want to be clear, I said forum post. The people in here thought I said foreign post. No, forum like a forum. So <laughs> just want to make that very perfectly clear. Um, so here it is on my wrist, just shy of seven inches. I personally think this looks great. Some people won't wear a watch under 38 mil. I think those people need to get over it and start trying on smaller watches because they will grow on you. Uh, there is no doubt about it. This is 33 mil by 41.5 mil look to look, only 10 mil thick and 16 mil looks. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I think it works really, really well. And I think this pigskin strap really complements the watch. So go check this one out on the website today. From there, let's bring it back to modern. We're sort of jumping all over the place with this trot, but I don't mind. I think it's quite fun. So let's take a closer look at this fairer chronograph, which I've wanted in for a little while and I was unsure on it when I first saw photos. But I have to say in person, it's really impressed me. So let's take a closer look. Next up is a watch, as I said, that when I saw the photos, I actually wasn't really a fan of it. I thought it was a bit too much, a bit too loud. And I was waiting to get one in person to actually see for myself before I made too many comments about it. And I'm glad I did because in person, I really, really like it. I think the colors actually work surprisingly well and it really does pop on the wrist. And this bezel is gorgeous. I think Ferrer have done a fantastic job and I should trust them by now when it comes to colors because they're proving themselves time and time again excuse the noise they're proving themselves time and time again they know what they're doing when it comes to color but this is the Ferro Barina, uh, Barina Sport chronograph manually wound and inside there is a manually wound Solita SW510BH Elaboré which is the upgraded and uh, better finished and also better refined and regulated version of the ETA very nice bridge that uh, Ferro have put on and decorated and just a really gorgeous package overall now this one is from April 2021. It does come with its box and paperwork and everything with it. Uh, and as I say, just a gorgeous example. And so I think you should be looking at if you're looking for a manually wound modern chronograph with all of the bells and whistles that you can expect from modern watches. But let's show it on wrists and tall dimensions. And again, this is where this watch really shines, both in design, but also proportions. They've designed it perfectly to fit on the wrist. 41 mil by 46 mil look to look in this cushion sort of tourneau-ish shape case, which works really beautifully. 13.5 mil thick and 20 mil look, so endless options. However, I really like this blue rally strap on it. I think it works perfectly. And it complements it just with that hint of blue here and here, it pops against the red and the white. So go check this one out on the website today. From there, let's go back to vintage. As I say, we're jumping around. We're gonna have a look at this gorgeous Amiga Geneve calendar. Absolutely amazing example. I think you guys and girls are gonna really like this one. Let's take a closer look. Next up, another one of my favorites from this week's drop, and it's actually surprisingly affordable, especially when you consider what it is, and it's an Amiga Geneve calendar automatic. Now, we've had plenty of these references throughout the years with the crosshair dolls. We've had them in solid 18 karat pink gold, in yellow gold, in stainless steel, in everything you can sort of imagine. However, we've never had the automatic calendar reference, which is quite unusual. And also, the case is unpopular. Polished, absolutely gorgeous. You still got those original chamfers on the lugs. The dial is all original with uh, some very nice patina. I really like it. You be the judge. It does have a couple of scratches on the dial and a couple of marks here and there, but in my opinion, to be expected of.
of a watch from this era, and this is circa 1959. And the exact reference to this one is 2982 uh, uh, 6SC, and inside is the automatic Amiga Caliber 503, a very good and reliable movement. But as I say, unpolished, absolutely gorgeous, and original and look at those indices that is what people are often drawn to and i'd say if you're in the uh, in the market for a automatic vintage seamaster from amiga i would not shy away from one of these because i actually think right now in the market they offer better value and arguably a more beautifully refined package than the Seamaster of the similar era. So let's show us one on wrist and torque dimensions. And here we go on wrist, beautifully proportioned at 34 mil by 42 mil look to look, 11 mil thick and 18 mil looks. Absolutely perfect. I would not shy away from this, even if you like bigger watches, give it a chance. Give it a week on wrist and I guarantee you won't look back. So go check it out today. Let's stick with vintage and get through it. Let's have a look at this awesome Seiko and it's one I've never seen before, Seiko Matic R, and I had to get it in for that reason. So let's take a closer look. So as I said, a Seiko I have personally never seen and that is why we had to buy it, we had to stock it and we had to bring it to the website. Thankfully, it's also a great looking watch and super interesting for the era. This is a Seiko Seiko Matic R oversized date in this tornado no tank style case you know almost like a Patek ellipse and what you have over there at the top at six is a gorgeous date surround with a really unusual font choice for the date um, it's all original it's all correct but it's just really interesting to see it's almost like a comic sans font uh, of today so you've got this sort of juxtaposition between a really vintage looking watch and something a bit more modern and a bit more art deco and everything sort of combined it feels like Seiko were just playing around with this reference and again, what makes it really interesting is there's an automatic Seiko Caliber 8305SC inside. Now, an automatic movement in a watch of this shape is quite unusual in the first place, but for it to come from Seiko, even more unusual. So the exact reference to this one is the 8305-500, and it is from circa December 1967. So, you know, it's pre-70s, even though I would have dated this probably 70s, considering the overall design. So really great to see. You've got the original finish there on the bezel. It's just really cool, but they're short on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my wrist for 1967 in this kind of design. This is a big watch and it's definitely a big watch for its time. Um, so 32 mil by 14 mil look to look, only 10 mil thick and 18 mil look. So endless options if you're not a fan of this strap pairing. However, I think it looks really cool. I think this is pineapple or apple, I can't remember. Uh, so the strap is actually made from a pineapple or apple. So a recyclable, um, you know, non-leather strap, which is really cool. These vegan straps, we're trying to get a few in, we're trying to test them out. And you know what, this one actually works really well on the watch and it feels nice on the wrist as well. Let's go check it out today. From there, let's go over to Citizen. I'm wearing a Citizen ball head at the moment we're going to take a look at this awesome railway timer part of history and super super affordable i think you'll be surprised by this one. next up we have something interesting from citizen and this is the citizen homer second setting railway issue and on the case back quite faintly you can actually see some engravings which refer to this being presented to someone who worked on the railway this one is from circa 1972 and the reference is 75008 and that dial and those hands and those indices all original believe it or not super white super crisp and super clean you even have the original crown over there at three o'clock as well um, inside this is a manually wound citizen caliber 0911 and what makes this one interesting is when you pull out the crown you can see the second hand stops that is what we call hacking which for 1972 was quite rare and the reason being this as i say was a railway clock so this is something they used to actually set and use on the railways which required accuracy and timing because what you wouldn't want to do is bring in a train too late or too early you could cause accidents and it would be very very serious um, so let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on wrist, really great proportions for 1972 at 36mm by 44mm look to look, only 10mm thick and 18mm lugs. We've tried to pair it on this nice blue suede, we're adding a bit of colour into the mix because usually we keep it very monotone. Um, you be the decider, luckily 18mm there's plenty of options so no doubt you'll have a couple of nice straps that will work on this perfectly. Brown would be my personal go to but you can choose whatever you want so go check it out on the website today. Now we've got three watches left on the table. We're gonna go over to Smiths. We've got two Smiths, but we're gonna start off with the Jubilee edition. And this isn't the Jubilee for the Queen's Jubilee that we're celebrating uh, the week just gone. This is actually a Jubilee edition for the 25th anniversary, I believe. 
I, I think it is. With the Aventure Iron Dial, absolutely amazing. Let's take a closer look. Next up is this Smith's Everest Silver Jubilee for the 25 year anniversary uh, with an Aventure Iron Dial. Now, for those of you that can see this, it sparkles. It looks like the night nice sky. Absolutely incredible, absolutely beautiful. Paired on its original Jubilee bracelet. Uh, nice case back there, just fingerprints, all good condition. This is a worn watch, but it's been worn very lightly. It was actually owned by myself for a little while and then sold on and then it's come back. Um, you know, people often trade in watches and buy new watches all of the time. So as I say, this is the Silver Jubilee edition. Inside is the automatic Miyota 9039, and this is a limited edition of 500 watches. This one's from March 2022, so very, very recent, and it does come with its full box and paperwork and all additional links. But let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on wrist, classic Explorer dimensions at 36 mil by 44 mil lug to lug, only 11 mil thick and 20 mil lug. So endless options if you're not a fan of the Jubilee. It will look good on pretty much any strap and that Aventura and Dahl really pops. I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. When this first came out, I wasn't a fan at all. I actually really disliked it. However, once I got one in and on wrist, it changed my mind completely. I love this watch. I think it's brilliant. So go check it out on the website today. From the special edition to the standard edition, but still absolutely amazing. That is the 36mm Smith's Everest. Let's take a closer look at this one. Next up is the Smith's Everest PRS 25. This is the classic 36mm Black Dahl, the one everyone seems to want. We've had the 40 mil in the past, we've had some other references, but this is always the one people ask if we can get, and here it is. This one's from February 2021, it does come with its full box and paperwork. Inside, beating away, is the automatic Miyota Caliber 9039, and paired on its original bracelet, which is a mock rivet style oyster bracelet. Works really well with the design, however, this 36 mil case and this design will work with any strap. So you put it on leather, NATO, anything you can imagine, and it probably will work beautifully. There isn't an awful lot to say about this model because I think we've had it before, I think we've spoken about it before. I think they're fantastic for the price, and I think you cannot go wrong if you're after that Explorer look without the sort of cost of an Explorer, or maybe you just don't want to walk around with, you know, seven to 10,000 pounds on your wrist, which I understand even more so if we're going back to what this is trying to emulate, which is a 1016, you're looking at sort of 15 to 20,000 pounds plus minimum. So to get something like this under 500 pounds, I think is fantastic. But let's show on wrists and toward dimensions. And here we go on my just shy of seven inch wrist, 36 mil by 43.5 mil lug to lug, 11.5 mil thick and 20 mil lugs. Endless options on this absolute awesome watch and just look how perfect that looks. It really works. So go check it out on the website today. And last but by no means least, we have a quartz Elliott Brown Holton with a really interesting green dial. Let's take a closer look at this one. And last but by no means least, this is the Elliott Brown Holton Nevo in uh, gray PVD with this very sort of dark green dial, really awesome faux patina in the hands, faux patina in the dial and the bezel. Just a good looking, incredibly well built watch, especially for the money. A specific reference to this one is the STR-R02. Inside beating away is a quartz Ronda caliber 715, a high grade quartz movement, so you really can't go wrong. Uh, this one is from September 2021. It does come with its box and papers, and it is in fantastic condition. Uh, so you really can just sort of put this on and off you go doing whatever it is you want to do and this watch will certainly take it. But let's show it on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on wrist. It's a big watch, but it does work really well on the wrist at 43 mil by 52.5 mil lug to lug. One thing to keep in mind is those lugs slope straight down, so it does actually work quite well considering. 12.5 mil thick and 22 mil lug. So go check this out on the website today. So there you have it, guys and girls. A big drop this week, 12 or 13 pieces. Um, certainly something for everyone at every price range as well. And this is what we want to achieve every single week. I say it every single week, but I really do mean it. If we can provide provide vintage under a couple of hundred pounds all the way up to modern at multiple thousands and we can sell all of them and we can enjoy all of them and appreciate them all that is the goal and at the end of the day i'm not interested in just selling high pieces and this and that this is more interesting to me personally but it's also what our business is now built on um, which i find super fascinating that's thanks to you guys and girls so thank you all very much i really do appreciate it and i hope you enjoy your weekend if you're watching this at the weekend as i say the week following this video i will likely not be in the office so please bear with us on replies, on inquiries, on viewings, all of that sort of stuff, and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Thank you.